Well, when the ticket committee of the charity play found Jane selling $3 tickets for $1.98, they relieved her of the responsibility of selling tickets. So now she can concentrate on the play itself, in which she plays a maid and understudies the leading role played by Mrs. Irene Lewis. This episode takes place the following evening in alternating scenes between the Aces bungalow and then to Mrs. Lewis' apartment. But first to the Aces, where we find Jane, Mr. Race, and Mark. Jane, I think you look a little tired. What's the matter? Well, who wouldn't be? I wish you could see me at those rehearsals. First I go out, then I come in, then I have to go out again and come in again and then do it over. And that curtsying I have to do. Curtsying, did you say? Yeah, like this. One foot back here and then bend the knees like this. Oh, you hear that crack? <laughs> well, that's very good, Jane. Yes, it is now, but you should have seen me the first time I tried it. Why? What happened? Well, he said to curtsy, and I tried it. Well, after I got up off the floor, I was... You a... Yeah, I, I was so embarrassed, I didn't know what oh, to do. Oh, Jane, you're overdoing this. Does it take all that to play the part of a maid? Well, Mr. Hamlin wants me to be good. He said so. I got kind of mad myself when he, he made me do it so many times. Oh, uh, temperamental actors. Huh? No, I thought I was temperamental, but he said it was more temper and not so much mental. Oh, <laughs> you did, did it? <laughs> yeah, so I just do everything he says. He said a cute thing today. He said, practice makes perfect. Oh, did he say that? Yes, oh. isn't it cute? Yeah. And it's right, too. The more I practice, the more perfect I get. I can tell. And he told me to practice at home, too. That's what I was going to do now. Oh, I wanted you to help me, Marge. Help you what? Of course. How? Well, I want to do this scene here where I come in and ask Mrs. Weatherby if she rang for me. All right. Where is it? Right here, will you? She's getting dressed to go out, and her husband comes in and doesn't want her to go out because he's been away from home a week or so, and he wants her to stay home, see? Well, I think that's fair. Of course it is, but she doesn't love him, really. She just married him for his money. Hmm, that's a novel idea. Uh, dear, how about you doing something, too? What? You read the part with Marge. Me? Yeah, I'll bet oh. you could do it as good as that Mr. Cooper. He's the one that's playing the part of Mr. Weatherby. I don't think he and Irene make a good couple at all, especially Mr. Cooper. Mm. Irene? Who's that? Mrs. Lewis. I call her Irene. That's her name, you know. I've watched them rehearse so many times, I can say it backwards. I have to keep watching them, you know, because in case something happens and she can't play the part, I'm the understudy. Yes, Jane. Well, I think if you just stick to the part of the maid... Well, how about starting this rehearsal? Come here, Mr. Ace. You'll be Mr. Weatherby and I'll be Mrs. Weatherby. You can uh, read over my shoulder. Yes, that's it. Okay, I'll try. Uh, that's it, dear. Well, you two make a nice couple. Oh. Yes, don't we, though? Oh, Jane, we do now. Yes, you do, dear. Oh, we do now. Yes, you do, <laughs> oh, Right. Let's get going here. Yes. There's a knock at the door. Mrs. Weatherby has the first line. Is that right, Jane? Yes. You say, yes. Who is it? Oh, yes. Yes. Who is it? It's I, my dear. May I come in? Very good, dear. Oh, thanks, Jane. The door opens and he comes in. Go ahead. Oh, yes. Um... Am I intruding? Of course not. But I'm in such a hurry, my love, I really must fly. But, sweetheart, I've only just come home today. I've been away a whole week. Surely you're not going out tonight, as if she isn't. <laughs> What's that last there? What? What did you say? That isn't in there. No, I was just saying that to myself, as if she isn't going out. I could tell a mile away she is. Yes, you guess it. She does go out. Yes, yeah, that's very difficult to guess from this brilliant dialogue. Who wrote this play? Mr. Hamden, this is the third play he's written. Really? Oh, mm -hmm. well, as he says, practice makes perfect. I suppose after he's written about a hundred or so... Oh, you're holding up rehearsal. You say, uh, surely you're not going out tonight, and I say... Oh, but, Pat, I told you when you called me last night, I already had made this appointment. Oh, call it off, can't you? Of course not. You're so beautiful tonight. Oh, thank you, my love. Oh, be careful. Mustn't must me. <laughs> oh, what's a little mud? <laughs> Here, that's no time to laugh. Well, that's what you think. <laughs> He's trying to kiss her. You have to be serious. Oh. Go ahead, Martin. Robert, please. Well, can I kiss my own wife? Of course, but I told you I'm late. Robert, you're crushing my dress. I'll buy you another. <laughs> Silly boy. <laughs> Silly, because I'm in love with my wife. Now, you rang, madame? Very good. You were both very good. <laughs> yes, but uh, wait a minute. Don't worry about us. You're the one that's in this play. Oh, yes. Well, how was I? Uh, well, uh... Well, let's hear that again. Uh, what do you say there? I come in like this. I stand here, then I... Cur oh, 
Uh, you rang, madame? Well? Well, I don't know. What do you think, Marge? I think she's perfect. Well, thank you, Marge. And I want to recuperate and say you were perfect, too. Really, Jen? Of course, I've been hearing Irene do it so much that I keep thinking of her in the part. She is beautiful. I must say that for her. Got to give the devil her booze. And she looks so well, too. Wear smart clothes, you mean, huh? No, I mean, I don't think she'll ever be sick. I mean, sick enough for me to play the part. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, well, never give up hope, dear. We can always hope for the worst, you know. Yes. <laughs> yes, I guess we can. Well, uh, is the rehearsal over, Jane? No, I guess I better go over it once more. If you two aren't too tired. No, I'm not, but I, I think you are, Jane. Don't you think you ought to rest? Oh, no, Mr. Hampton, stay Yes, yeah, pra- yes, practice makes perfect. Yes, mm-hmm. well, how about it, Mark? Okay, if you can stand it, I can. There comes a knock at the door, and Mrs. Weatherby looks up from her desk. Well, Mr. Hamden, you're late. Sorry, Irene. I dozed off for what I thought was a minute, and... I'll bet you are worn out after today's rehearsal. To a frazzle. <laughs> well, Martin, can I mix you a drink? No, thanks. Never touch you when I'm directing a play this way. Well, where will we go? Oh, anywhere. Some place where it's quiet and we can eat in peace. Not that place you took me to last night. I know. Just the spot. Now, you just relax for the rest of the evening. I'm amazed at you, Irene, after the day you put in. <laughs> well, aren't I the amazing Mrs. Weatherby? And a very lovely one, too, if I may say so. Well, coming from our hard-boiled director, that's something to cherish. Oh, come now. Am I as hard-boiled as all that? Not now you're not, but how you did carry on this afternoon. Oh, I didn't offend you, did I? Of course not. I understood. It's your work. Yes, it's my work made twice as hard by that woman they insist on putting in the plane. Oh, Harris, do you think you're sick of that? Not if my little plan goes through. I'll work her so hard, she'll be glad to retire from the stage for life. <laughs> I was for leaving her out entirely, but Mrs. Burnside tells me we can't now. Something about those tickets she was selling. Oh, yes, it's an awful mess. Well, let's not worry about her tonight. Let's not worry about anything. We have a long, perfect evening ahead of us. Let's make a mess of it. Well, what are we waiting for? I'll be with you just as soon as I... What's the matter, Irene? Isn't that somebody at the door? Hello! Ned! Surprise! And Ned, you didn't tell me that... Well, I wasn't expecting you for another week yet. Well, how are you, sweetheart? You glad to see me? Ned, please. Uh, This is Mr. Hamden, and this is my husband. Mr. Hamden? How do you do? Mr. Hamden is directing our play, Ned. Oh, yes, yes, the play. Yes, of course. Well, how is she, Mr. Hamden? She's going to be great in it. Uh, of course she is. That's uh, and beautiful, too. Ned, please. Well, you are, isn't she? Goes without saying, of course. Well, I, I like to say it, and I don't care who hears me. Uh, Ned, Ned, we, uh, that is, Mr. Hamden and I were just going out. Going out? Oh, but your, your plans have changed, haven't they, dear? Oh, I can't change them now. Well, nonsense, of course you can. Why, I've just come home. But we, uh, well, that is, we... Well, we're going to talk over the play. Oh, call it off, can't you? Oh, I'm afraid I can't now, Ned. The play's only a week away. Oh, bother the play. Irene, I don't well, think... Well, perhaps Mr. Lewis is right. I don't want Oh, to. no, he's not. I think it's unfair for him to come bouncing in unexpectedly this way and expect me to rearrange my plans. Oh, if you would have phoned me, Ned, or, or wired well, me... Well, I wanted to you... surprise you. I don't like surprises. I'm sorry, Ned, but I'm going. Now, look, Irene, I don't want you to go. It's too late now. Come along, Mr. Hamden. Well, it's you and Irene, sir. you know very well I don't approve of this stage life you're constantly getting mixed up in, and I certainly don't approve well, of Well, isn't your... that just too bad? I gave up the stage to marry you, and if I manage to find some little happiness doing something I love, neither you nor anybody else is going to stop me. I warn you, Irene. Oh, don't threaten me, Good night, Mr. Lewis. Good night, nothing. You haven't heard the last of this. Irene, if you don't want me to start making trouble for you, you'd better change your mind about this. You rang, madame? Yes, I did, Marie. I'll try it again. You rang, madame? Yes, I did, Marie. You rang, Oh, madame? all right. She rang, Jane. Now what? Now, nothing. That's all I have to say. She just tells me she's going out, she wants her coat, and I go out. Well, I think you're making a lot of fuss about one line. Yes, maybe I am. I guess I'll be all right. Won't I? Oh, sure you will. Now, take it easy for a while, Jane. Well, have you any suggestions to make about the way I do it? None. You're just right. 
How about you, dear? What? Do you want to be suggestive about anything I do that you think I could do better? Well, uh, let me, I can give you one point. I, I think when you come in, you should get a little more expression into it. You just stand there and say, you rang with Dan, you just stare into space. Why don't you get some animation into it? Uh, make your eyes talk. My eyes talk? Yes, when you say you rang, madame, kind of make your eyes talk as you say it. What are you talking about? I don't know, Jack. <laughs> Who ever heard of eyes talking? I'm sorry I asked you, dear. Well, I'm sorry I asked you. Oh, well, I'll be all right, I guess. I hope. If I could only play the part of Mrs. Weatherby, I'd show him something. Oh, well, I don't care if I do or not. I should worry. Mm. Oh, I know what you think. You think it's sour cream, but it's not. <laughs> Jane, the expression is sour grapes, not cream. Grapes? Yes, yeah, grapes. You've heard the story of the fox and the grapes, haven't you? The fox would try to jump up and eat some grapes on the vine, and he couldn't reach them, so he walked away and said, Oh, well, they were sour. Do you feel all right, dear? Do I feel all right? First his eyes talking, now a fox talk. <laughs> oh, I guess you've been rehearsing too much. You better just be back. Well, be it sour cream or sour grapes, there might be just the possibility that the understudy may play that part after all. We learn more about it when next we meet the Easy Ace.